What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Blues people. I know it's been a while since I have gone live. And I hope the reflection of my screen and my uh, lenses is not uh, jarring or disturbing. How do I sound, folks? Does it sound good? Does it sound bad? Let me know, because we're about to get to it. Checking out a couple of things. We're not in the group. The profile should not be a problem. But hold on. We got a little situation. All right. We want to get to make sure that uh, everybody gets to chime in on this conversation. Brother Mark Lee, what's happening? What's happening? That's right. That's right. Uh, I just want, I'm going to check, I'm going to fix something real quick, and then we're going to jump into this, because uh, they're telling me that I have to uh, make public so folks on Facebook can chime in. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do real quick, and if it doesn't work, then we don't worry about it. All right. So... Hey, 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 there you go. Okay, so Facebook is good. Thank you, Sister Naya. All right, so let's jump to it. Let's let's jump to it. Um, I'm not even going to hold back. (laughs) I received a phone call. Uh, The first phone call came in October 6th. um, And then I uh, called back. Make a long story short, after playing phone tag, today, the reason why I'm going live right now is because today, after speaking to one of our longest and first supporters and um, paid subscribers, Miss Gloria White. Uh, I have so much love for Miss Gloria White. She is not the only one, but she gets a shout out because Miss Gloria White not only has been one of our earliest supporters, um, she moved with us from platform to platform. Okay, so that shows her dedication to our, our our voice and what we've been trying to do even before now. What is happening now as I'm on this journey of, of academic scholarship, she was riding with us when I was what's considered a community scholar. Now, with that being said, the purpose of Miss Gloria's phone call, like I said, we're just going to jump right into this. The purpose of Miss Gloria's phone call was one, first and foremost, she received the new issue of the where we at? There we go. She received the new issue of the African American Folklorist Magazine, which she receives every time it goes out because of the tier she pays for, right? But she saw this on the back. Okay, so she saw that we had a uh, festival this past August. She was distraught because she was not aware of it. Now, to be fair, I have slowed down on my email blast. It was monthly. I would send out a MailChimp uh, email uh, with information to keep folks in the know. I have slowed down because um, the, these last uh, couple of semesters have been uh, demanding. But she wanted to make sure, one, that she wasn't missing what we were doing, uh, Jack Dapper Blues and African American Folklorist, but also what she said was she trusts and relies on my platform to disseminate black um, public programming. What's happening, Brother Brock? She, um, Miss White, Miss Gloria White, relies on Jack Dapper Blues and the African American folklorists to disseminate information of black 
um, folk public programming, like festivals, which I want to shout out to Decolonizing the Music Room and Sister Brandy Wilder Pace, because they have a festival coming up. Um, I want to shout out to Sister Tafara because she just her and 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 um they they just all get busy, right? But to get back to what what I'm saying, her and Brother Terry. I'm sorry, I cannot say Brother Terry. Forgive me, I cannot say Brother Terry. But but they all have great things going on. They all make sure they take care of the community, but. Sister Gloria White was like, I rely on you and your voice and, and your platform to let me know about these things because our traditional expression, out the roots of everything that we do have been so co-opted, it's hard for her to find these programs in other circulations, in other publications. They're not focused on the Black Bottom blue, uh, Acoustic Blues and Phil Holler Festival. They're not focused on any other, you know, African American Roots and Music Festival and all the other uh, festivals that are uh, significant to our voice, that are significant to our expression, that are significant to our folk group, that are significant to our folklore and folk life. So I was like, you know what? After speaking to one of our earliest and longest um, supporters and, and, and financial subscribers, I have to go live and put the call out, which is why the title of this, right now the title of this episode is You Have a Home, okay? You have a home. What does that even mean, okay? What does it mean that you have a home? Because if we all really sit back and think about it, home means several things. House means several things, right? It's not just a place to live, as we all know, what do I mean by that? Okay, look, I need a place to rest my head. Damn that. I don't care about nothing else. I just need three hots in the cot, right? That's one aspect. But the aspect I'm referring to is a, a cultural exchange place. Better yet, a cultural uprising place. And these words are probably scary to some uprising, but it doesn't mean what you believe it means in some cases. <laughs> but what, what I'm talking about is a space where our tradition, our culture, our folklore, our folk life, our narrative is cultivated. That's the home I'm referring to. The space where our tradition and narrative and history is cultivated. That's what I'm referring to. So I'm telling you, you have a home. So what does that mean if I'm telling you, you have a home and the home I'm talking about is the place where our folklore, folk life, culture, and traditions are cultivated. What I'm talking about is Jack Dapple Blues Heritage Preservation Foundation. What I'm talking about is the African American Folklore Magazine and website. These are places where you have a home. You, as participants of Black folklore and Black folk life, Indigenous folklore and Indigenous folk life, African American folklore and African American folk life. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Oh, man. The, the, the culture grio. What's happening, Sister Samantha? And she 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 sent us one of the, the hardest articles. Go to the website and take a look at it. You know what I'm saying? Go to the website and take a look at it. Because what you what what what's going on here is there are people looking for our narratives by us. And when I say narratives, when I'm saying stories, whether it's our folk tales, our legends, whether it is our um, true to life experience, whether it's our belief and not the belief that's predicated by pop culture or 
please forgive me for those who subscribe to our mega churches because not all mega churches fall into this category, but I'm talking about folks on the ground at the little bitty small church around the corner that you only go to because your grandmama been going there since the 60s, right? These are the places, these are the stories, these are the things that the African-American folklorists uh, platforms. And we have to tell these stories because these are our stories. However, again, as this sermon goes, you have a home. So you have a place, you have a place where you can either write about your story, your family's folklore, your family tradition. You have a place where you can write about uh, something that you were studying, the music you were studying. You know, like, I'm, I'm a blues guy. I come out of hip-hop, you know. And if you really want to know, you can always go to one of my YouTube pages. The African American Folklorist YouTube page is very new and still developing. Um, I don't want that to be majority of my content. And this is why I keep saying you have a home because those of you who... Uh, participate and contribute to the African American folklorists. You also have a space for video content, right? And that's the YouTube page. But you can find this presentation that I did there and on um, Jack Dapper Blues, which is hip hop is the great 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 grandchild of the blues. These three, read it. These three images represent 100 years of Black expression. And I'll just reiterate why I say hip hop is the great 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 grandchild of the blues because I equate and evaluate that according to my grandparents' birth. Because when they were born, blues really just became a pop music, right? So this was kind of their music. Like when I was born, hip hop was developing into a pop music. It was initially a uh, subculture like blues. And by the time I became of age, it started becoming a pop music. So this is why I say hip, the three great, great, greats, right? Because it is actually the music of the great, great grandparents, but it becomes popular in the great grandparents and the grandparents era, like hip hop in my era. Okay. And also we, if you all know that we celebrate black folklorists. We celebrate African-American folklorists. And I have to really, really, um, I just have to tell you, and, 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 and the reason why this is extremely important, when I first started documenting the blues, talking about the blues, the same thing happened when I first realized and found out I was a folklorist, which everyone, most people know the story. And I started looking for black folklorists, African-American folklorists. I couldn't find any. Okay. I did not, I could not find any, possibly because of the terminologies. Now, this is a good book right here. For those who are into education or, or academia, this is a great book, African-American Studies. Um, what is it called? The Discipline and Its Dimensions. The reason why that's a great book, because um, just like mo other things, that book explains why the term folklore has not really been in African-American discipline or even in African-American communities and homes, right? It was to a degree. Um, cult people that was into culture understood folklore, but um, in some cases it was, uh, it was meant differently. We have a different meaning than uh, our Western counterparts, friends, brothers, uh, 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 sisters, uh, colleagues, and, and the like. Okay. And this leads me to Dr. Shirley Moody Turner, who is the very first African-American folklorist that I met. And I found her not under folklore. Uh, you guys, this another uh, interview you can go back and find on my YouTube page, Jack Dapple Blues. Um, and she, she had written a book. Jesus, I hate when I forget people's names. But she had written a book 
or written part of a book about a, a writer from Chicago that was part of the Chicago um, Renaissance. Because there was a Chicago Renaissance. There was also a South Central or a Central Ave Renaissance. I am a New Yorker with Southern lineage. And ha the Harlem Renaissance was the most, not significant, but the most popular. But there were there was a Chicago Renaissance. There was a Central Ave or a South Central Renaissance. And the sister, I can't think of her name. I have it here on one of my um in my notes, uh, but I don't want to go through all that while I'm live with you all. She was part. She was a writer during the Federal Writers Project. Right, um, as was uh, Zora Neale Hurston and Richard Wright and these folk, okay? And Shirley Moody Turner, Dr. Shirley Moody Turner wrote something about her, which is how I found Dr. Shirley Moody Turner. And then I found this book. Right, Black, Folklore and the Politics of Racial Representation, written by Dr. Shirley Moody Turner, who was the first black folklorist I met. Now, you guys got to understand something. There's a reason why I'm telling y'all this. I'm not just rambling, okay? I'm not just giving you my story is fine, but there's more to it. All of this is way more significant than me. Way more significant than me. So when I meet Dr. Shirley Moody Turner and I reach out to her, she agrees to interview with me. Uh, at the time, I had a show on Blog Talk, okay? And we, we, we did a great interview. Like I said, you can go to Jack Dapper Blues, um, uh, radio and TV on YouTube, and you could find my interview, my first interview with Dr. Shirley Moody Turner. So now I'm like, wow, this is what it is. And I can, but I still, I'm still having a hard time finding black folklorists, right? And her book also explains a bit of why um, that term is not necessarily synonymous with black scholars. Okay, or community scholars or activists, because like for me, just to skip ahead for a bit and I'm going to get back to the story to me, William Still. OK, William Still. And I'm sorry, I'm blocking. This is one of my favorite books. William Still, if he if he's not considered a folklorist, I would go as far as saying he conducted folkloristic and eth field ethnographic works because this particular book right here. Underground Railroad, Authentic Narratives and Firsthand Accounts. What does that mean? I suggest anybody who is into uh, the field, the discipline of folkloristics, ethno eth uh, ethnography, or just the study of Black narratives and uh, storytelling, get this book right. Now, mind you, we are all not of the mind of the out of Africa. We are all not of the mind of being indigenous. That's fine. I am not discussing that. This is not what this is about, okay? The reason why I implore you to get that book because what he ultimately did as the secretary of a, um, a prominent organization because he worked with the Grim Keys and all the families that the Grim Keys worked with out of Philly. These were black folk with money, educated black folk with money that put their life and finances and career on the line to help other black people escape um, extremely harsh conditions. Okay. So now Williams still comes along, an educator to to a degree, and he, you know, there's a there's a lot with him. Look him up, but the point I'm making is, as he played his role with taking these escaped slaves from one location to another, because this is about how the grip. And I, you know what? Go 
go to African American folklore or Jack Apple Blues and listen to my piece about Charlotte Fortin Grimke and her father. Okay? Because they were instrumental in the Underground Railroad. Charlotte Fortin Grimke's father funded William Garrison's Liberator newspaper. Okay? There's so many connections here. And the, the irony and the humor about it to me is it's just all over the place in my brain because this is what I'm what I'm talking about is more essential to the narrative and the story and where the African American folklorist uh plays a part in this currently. But it's um it's imperative for you to know that ultimately William still documents these stories of these slave families that he's uh 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 moving from one location to the other in safety. What does that mean? He is documenting their stories as slaves, and he's documenting their stories as trying to get from one location to the other. He is, okay, if you don't want to call him a folklorist, could he be considered an oral historian? Do you understand what I'm saying? And the reason why I'm so passionate about this is because Black folk get omitted from these conversations. So now we have the African-American folklores. So now to get back to Shirley Moody Turner, after my interview with her, I was like, I have to find more black folklores. I mean, it's really that simple. Now, don't get, don't get it twisted. There were multiple non-black folklorists who assisted in my journey. Simon Bonner is one of them. He's another one I met extremely early. And he hit me to um, the American Folklore uh, Society. So when I go to my first meeting, here is where, I mean, before I get there, you know, if, if you know me, you know I'm always trying to push the envelope and get something done. So we established the African-American folklore section, reestablished, because there was one before. We don't need to get into all of that, but it was established. They allowed me to, to, to work this, and I was connected with the Black folklorists that were part of the society. And uh, Todd Lawrence said, you know what, I'll do it with him. Okay, so now I go there and I meet all these wonderful people, Marilyn White, Langston, uh, 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 Colin Wilkins, Anika, I, I Wilson. I can go down the list of, of all, and, and if I didn't name you, please forgive me because this is, again, I'm, I'm, uh, I guess I'm rushing to the point. But I met all these wonderful black scholars that does work in the diaspora at in, in some point or another, whether it's, whether it's Africa, whether it's indigenous, whether it's street, whether, whatever it is, okay? I come back and I'm, you know, I'm pacing in my workspace and my wife is like, what's going on? I said, I have to, I, I have, I'm going to create the African-American folklorist. And she looked at me. She was this, why? I said, because I have to create a space, one, where we can find and know who our black folklorists are or our black eth um, ethnomusicologists are or our black musicologists or our black anthropologists or our black archaeologists or our black political scientists. Do you get what I'm, where I'm going with this? Or our black, like myself, applied folklorists. We need a space where these folk can be identified. It, it took it was too difficult and challenging for me to find these brilliant folk. You know, I meant to get my two newspapers, which was the first, I think I did two or three newspapers before it became a magazine. And I meant to get that so I could show you because because Wanda, Wanda Addison, I believe, was the very first folklorist of the month. What's up, Wanda? Okay. Why is this important? Okay, so to slow down a bit, we needed a space to identify black folklorists and then give a a month celebration to the to an African American folklorist of the month that is just doing 
extremely significant work, which all of them are doing. Don't get me wrong. All folklorists of all colors and ethnicities and folk groups are doing great work. I'm focused on the lesser known that are doing extremely significant work of my folk group. So we, so we have the space to identify black folklorists doing the work. Great. Number two, a space where either seasoned black folklorists, up and coming African American folklorists, or aspiring emerging African American folklorists, even folklorists who don't even know they were folklorists, but they're doing the work. We needed a space where all these people could do what? Oh, come on, stop playing with me. Have a home. We needed a space where these folks have a home. So the African American folklorist was established, distributed it through the Jack Dapple Blues Heritage Preservation Foundation. Now, the Jack Dapple Blues Heritage Preservation Foundation is the focal point for research, archiving, and raising awareness of African-American traditional music, folklore, folk life, narrative, material, cultural vernacular, and the Black experience. Blues first. You heard me. Come on. Because the blues is the oral and oral story of the blues people. Who's the blues people? Black Americans. Okay? And there's assortments of black Americans, right? You, you, you hear the foundational black American, you hear the pan-African, right? You hear Hebrew, you hear more, you hear indigenous, you hear black magic. We can go down the list. Orisha, we, we can go down the list. Oshun, we can go down the list of all the Christian, black Catholic, doesn't matter. You have a home. This is the space. So now when, 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 when great folks like Mrs. Gloria White is looking to connect either with you personally or just get the story of, come, she can come here, which is why she's been one of the longest supporters because we've been doing this work long before my family and I said, well, you know what, why don't you try to be a an academic scholar, which is, there's nothing wrong with that. And I'm not saying that uh, in a condescending way because it is not easy on either side of the aisle, okay? So I'm not saying that in a condescending way, but what I'm saying is the work has always been, was always being done. We came here to fine tune it because I represent a group of people and even as demanding as the work is, whether it's the academic work or the actual applied work, the call from Miss Gloria White reestablishes in my mind, soul, and heart why I chose, excuse me, I'm, who, I didn't choose this, why I chose me. Her phone call reignited, not that it was lost. How about reminded? Is that a better word? Reminded me why I was chosen to do this. So we got great people, again, like my brother Ju Julius or my sister Brandy Pace Waller or, 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 oh man, Black by God. We got these great, you know, we got all these folk across multiple platforms with multiple avenues of documenting, disseminating, and sharing Black story. Queen Nur, Doggy, you know, I, I can go through a whole bunch of folk that some you know, some you don't. Corey Harris, John Tavis Willis, Marquise Knox, Veronica Jackson, these are uh, 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 Professor Harp. These are blues musicians 
Deidre Hurdle Ruff, Deidre Farr, these are blues musicians that teach, educate, promote, and exude the blues people expression. Shy Perry, Billy Perry, rest in peace, Bill Howlin. And I'm, I'm telling you this, not... There's nothing exploitative about this. I'm being serious. I'm, I'm I'm being serious. Our job is to be a home for our story, all of our stories. The Honorable Queen Chief Warhorse, the Honorable Mr. Walter Wesley, the Honorable Miss Phoenix Moon. All I'm I'm calling out people's names that have honored the platform with their work because they're telling our narratives and that's what this is for and I thank Mrs. Gloria White for just reigniting the energy you know reigniting the energy matter of fact the prior um, folklore of the month on the magazine. I don't. Did I play this already? I'm gonna play it again. How about that? You know, I was speaking to um. I don't remember if she was an archivist or a curator here, and I was looking for something specific. It was a white lady at the um, archival part of the library here, and um. She said, unfortunately. Not many African Americans uh, give us things to to archive or hold, so I wouldn't have much, you know. And I walked away saying to myself, initially, it's a shame, but then I had to think a little bit longer. There has to be a reason why black folk for the lack of better, to keep it as broad as possible, don't trust certain institutions with this story. Yeah, because, I mean, the story has gotten distorted so many times, has been told wrong so many times, have been, you know, um, there's so many instances, even within our field, within folklore, where, where that has happened. I mean, there's been great work done, Yes. I, you know, there are folks who have been very conscientious and who, who I really um, think have, have done wonderful work. And, um, but there's also a lot of distortion and, and, and um, kind of getting the story wrong or, or, you know, at, at, at worst, you know, using it as a way to, um, to look at black people, to exoticize, right, and and so on. Now, that was my interview with Dr. Diana and Jai. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant scholar. She was on the cover of the last issue before this issue with Dr. Shirley Moody Turner. And I want to point out, she said how the story has been, was, was, was just put in the wrong context, disseminated incorrectly. And I'm, I'm paraphrasing her statement, right? But you heard what she said. And you heard my question. So, or my statement, right? So why is that important? <laughs> because we are here to put our story in the proper context. Again, you have a home. Because ultimately, you can trust people from your folk group, your tradition, your background to honor your story. I'm not saying no one else will. I'm definitely not saying no one else will. What I am saying is we are here for that. We are here for that. 
You have a home. Okay? You have a home. So with that home, what does that get you? We're, we're on every platform when it comes to, yeah, you see me on the bottom. I, I guess I could have made that a little bit bigger. <laughs> but we're on every streaming platform, every streaming platform. You can go there and listen to our sister, Hannah Marie. Right in the Black Banjo Reclamation Project. But guess what? If you ever, if you've ever been to the African American Folklorist website or read anything of the mission statements, it tells you that it also includes those interested in Black traditional transmission and culture. What does that mean? Good friend and good scholar and good colleague of mine, Christina Gaddy, who's written a book called Well of Souls, Uncovering the Banjo's Hidden History, right? So, you know, we focus on Black folk first, obviously. However, there are great scholars that are doing the work that are that all are not Black American or of the diaspora. They are non-Black, but they're doing just as great work and they are also included on the platform which means again our platform you know where i'm going you have a home the the narrative of black folk the folklore the folk life of black folk the tradition of black folk the religion of black folk the behavior of black folk the fact that if you need the fact that if you don't understand when presidential administrations change, funding policies for organizations and public programming change, black organizations are at the bottom totem pole of the receiving of funds from government and uh, uh, federal or uh, 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 organizations that give money it's changing it's changing it's changing it is changing it is changing it is getting better it is definitely getting better so i don't want to i i just want to be clear i'm not doing a oh woe is me and i'm not acting like things have not i don't want to sound like let me rephrase that i don't want to sound like nothing has changed and oh woe is us what i am saying and i want to be extremely clear you have a home. Our platform is designed to give you these types of informations. And more importantly, if you are working on these things and you need a place to highlight platform or publish your works, because maybe it wasn't published before, or maybe where you're trying to get it published doesn't see your vision. Oh, baby, you have a home, particularly if you're talking about our story. Well, only if you're talking about that. <laughs> Let's be clear, you know? So I don't know. Anybody else um, got any questions? Hmm? Oh, look at you. Oh, yeah, we're dead serious. We're dead serious. And we send it out. You know, I got some more to send out. Oh, and let me explain something. All right, because again, Miss Gloria reminded me. So I'm telling my peoples if y'all got information that you need to get out with demeanor, you need to contact me. But also remember one thing the, the, it, depending on what it is, what information that you have that you're, 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 you're spreading. Some talk to me and we could just mm, put it up there and list it. Some, come on, order a, a sponsor an ad in a magazine. Sponsor an article in a magazine. Sponsor a segment on, in, 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 in the podcast, okay? Because we help each other. Right. So there's people who are reaching out to me because they 
love what's in here. And guess what? I'm not writing all these things. So it's not like I'm asking you for money from me. There's a slew of people that write and submit that pe- the people who tap in, they love it. So if you're going to come to me, don't come to approach me the way you approach those other folk. Right? Because there's a habit of, you know what I'm talking about. We don't even need to, we, yeah. So there's a couple of ways. Some things are listed. You know, uh, so what do I mean some things are listed? Um, there's blues musicians, there's poets, there's books that are listed on the websites just as references of things that are like you need this you, you know these people you need to know these works you need to know you need to read right again this is one of them okay again this is one of them okay again this is one of them okay but on the flip side of that, when you have a, a a brand or something that you're promoting in that way, sponsor an ad. When you have an event that you're promoting in that way, sponsor an ad, small or large, because there are black folk that's looking for you. And we can help each other out. And when I say help each other out, collaborate, collaboration how? You sponsor an ad and you tap into the folk that's buying these magazines or the folks that subscribe monthly to get this information. This is what we're talking about. Now, I know some of you have been asking me about our merch. You can find that on um, YouTube, not YouTube, I'm sorry, Facebook under uh Jack Dapper Blues Radio, and I believe the African American folklorists. Uh, what I'll probably do is later, it, I'll go to the folk. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, the YouTube description and the Facebook description, and drop it in. Maybe I could drop it in the comments right now while I'm rapping with y'all. You know, um, don't want to be heavily distracted because at the end of the day, what's important is for you to get the message that we are in this together and being in this together, we are called to the charge to make sure our people get our information. You heard what I'm saying? So here what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna drop the link to the Facebook store right here. All right, so y'all can grab it, okay? so you all can grab it you know now this was our very first uh blues festival you know jack dapper blues heritage preservation foundation has been working and trying to throw a blues festival in a black community with african-american musicians for years and it finally came together in the Black Bottoms of Russellville with the Sikh Museum and a whole slew of great folk. Uh, The Go Lighties, uh, again, Sister Tafora and her peoples came through. South Arts came through. Uh, And this is what I'm telling you. I don't want to make this sound like Doom's Day because we do have allies. And if you do the work and you do the work properly, then you get the results, right? But it is imperative to understand that we got what we have to do to get it and that there are informations that you need to know. And that information is disseminated through this platform, meaning what? You have a home. Okay, you have a home. Okay, so if no one has any questions or anything to ask or contribute, which is okay, I just love the fact that y'all have been rocking with me and rocking with the platform and understanding what 
we are working to do consistently because everything to me is about sustainability, right? The sustainability of the black voice, the sustainability of our folk life, folklore, traditional expression, and everything that goes with it. Now, things change, things evolve, but that's not what we're talking about right now. What we're talking about right now is you have a home for all this to live, a repository. Okay? So y'all be good. Y'all keep bluesing. And y'all keep asking your grandparents and your aunts and your uncles and whatever family member that you have that's alive, whatever community member that is still alive, continue to document those stories and just learn it for yourself how you want to do it. But you have a home. You have a place to bring that information so that other folk can see, like, perfect example. And I'll, I'll leave you with this. I'll leave you with this. I will leave you with this. So... After my father and my grandfather passed, and we we did, you know, in Miss uh, uh, my Mississippi family came to Washington. We buried my granddaddy in a um veterans spot, and my daddy in Belrose, uh, with all my family in Louisiana and stuff, uh, and came back looking for other folk that had this experience, finding out that your people is part of the blues, you know, and not only part of the blues, part of the migration, all these great things that kind of directed my path to where I'm at right now. Then I started looking for other people and it was really hard to find. With you have a home here, this repository, this platform, this publication, when other folks of the black diaspora, whether it be the American black diaspora or the full diaspora, it shouldn't be that hard for them to find because they'll know that we have a home here. Let me go check Jack Dapper Blues. Let me go check the African-American folklorists. They usually have something that can direct me in the right, you know, point me in the right direction when it comes to our story. You have a home. Let's not blow it, okay? So many people ask for this. So many people say it's necessary. So many people say, well, we don't have this for ourselves and we don't have, you got it now. You got it now. You got it now. Let's get it going. You see that? That's my brother right there. Marquise Knox, and I'm going to tell you, what up, homeboy? That's the bluesman who's going to be a pastor one day. I'm telling you, I'm putting it out there. He's going to be a pastor. You got it right now, y'all. We don't need to ask anymore. We don't need to complain about it not. We got it. It's here. All right? Y'all be good. Y'all keep bluesing, and I will talk to y'all very soon.